All right, so here we are. After a long break, I'm uh, finally back at it. Today is a pretty good day. Uh, we're in the low 70s. Maybe exactly 70 or 71. Uh, wind's blowing probably, I don't know, pretty fast. <laughs> so maybe 10 miles per hour, it's pretty strong. But it's nice to be out, moving around. It makes me feel good already. Uh, you can see all the leaves from trees now. Last time we were riding, uh, a lot of trees did not have leaves yet, but they're, they're all doing their trees. They all got leaves now. Or at least it looks like all of them do. Some of them have very new leaves, but still leaves. Oh yeah, I probably should turn on that street. Let me turn around. I'm starting off this trip as I do most trips, not following the exact paths. I didn't loop my chains before I left today. I was thinking maybe I should have done that. Last time we went riding, it was after a rain. Now this time it hasn't rained in a couple of days. I had tried to go out two days ago, except for the fact that my uh, forearms were hurting just too much. I couldn't couldn't grip. They were just in tremendous pain at any attempt at gripping anything. So I looked on the internet to say uh, you know, what's going on with that. And they said, well, if you've been recently started uh, lifting weights after not doing it for a while, and I go, well, yes, that's true. Then it's probably because you need to do some stretching. And I go, oh, didn't know I needed to stretch my forearms. That seemed like a strange thing to stretch. So the guy gave me a um, stretching instruction on how to stretch out your forearms so that uh, they won't hurt. So I said, okay, I'll give it a try. It sounds a little weird, but maybe so. I was thinking I had arthritis really bad or something. So I stretched out uh, the way he said, and right after I did it, it hurt while I was stretching. And after I finished stretching, it continued to hurt. And I said, well, this is worthless. It said you need to do it four times a day. And I go, all right, I'll stick to it. So I was gonna give it a week, you know, try, try something for a little while anyway. So um, I did it uh, three more times that day. And the next morning I got up and started it again. And when I started it that day, it was only barely hurting. In fact, my right one wasn't hurting at all. And the left one only hurt uh, slightly. And I was thinking, well, maybe it is working or this is just coincidence. No, one or the other. So I decided to uh, continue doing it that day. And then the next day I got up and both my arms were uh, in pretty good shape. And I was thinking, man, this stretch actually works. So that means I can go back to weightlifting and I could once again go riding today. So while my right forearm is pretty much, um, doesn't hurt at all anymore. It used to be I couldn't even pick up a glass. It would hurt so badly. Uh, but I can pick up glass now, I can ride my bike. Uh, my left hurt slightly when I tried to pick up a glass but not so bad that I can't still pick up the glass. Before it was hurting just too badly. I just uh, refused to pick up the glass because it was going to be too painful. Uh, I could still pick it up. It's just that it was painful. So who wants to go through the pain if you don't have to? So, uh, but today it was okay. So I'm thinking this stretching actually is helping. So I'm going to keep this stretching going. Uh, 
in order to keep the paint off, which is, sounds like an extremely good idea to me. Uh, now today on my ride, I'm just going to take a ride through the neighborhood, looking at how the trees all have uh, come to life again. Uh, I ought to try to climb this. Climbing this hill hurts my knees a little bit, but not too bad. A lot of pretty things out today. I like this area, it's not pretty overgrown. Well, I'll probably lubricate my uh, chain after I get back before my next ride because uh, I don't know if it needs it particularly but I sh shouldn't keep avoiding it no reason not to Now one of the things I like doing is just traveling at a, usually my assistant one, sometimes two, but usually not higher than that. I don't usually want a three or four because I want to do a bit of the exercise myself. Uh, since I did a study on dementia, I found out that doing these exercises is uh, a few times a week is actually really helpful to prevent that, so uh, I definitely don't want it. So, and this is something I can actually do. Uh, and if it does get overwhelming, the reason I you have a e-bike is so in case it does get overwhelming, you can switch to uh, throttle and you don't have to do any of the pedaling. And you can just make it back home or to your area where you started from uh, in this case i got to stop wow a lot of cars You notice the cloud coverage is pretty good today. It's mostly sunny, but there's in front of us it looks like it's mostly cloudy. <laughs> so it just depends which direction you look. <laughs> Since the last time we have taken a ride together, I have st started trying to grow a uh, better beard. Uh, you wonder how I might have gotten into such a thought. And it was, I was just sitting around one day noticing that uh, a lot of the sexiest men in the world had scruffy beards. Not full beards, just beards that were just probably what they could grow in a couple of weeks of, of uh, trying. And I was thinking, maybe I should do that. I want to be one of the top sexiest men in, um, in the world, so I should get out and try to grow me a beard too. So my dad had just died, and so a few days after that, I decided this would be the time to start uh, growing my beard. You know, Sean Connery, who was voted uh, sexiest man alive back in 1989 he was 60 so it's not totally unheard heard of uh, that a person in their 60s could 
could get into the top category. Uh, of course, I'm no Sean Connery, so uh, I'm not trying to be number one. I'm uh, just trying to get in the top 10. Uh, that'd be good enough for me. Now, I have a little bit of advantage already on my beard. And the fact that, oh, it thinks I should have turned there. Let me go back and turn. I don't think this thing is is correct but we'll go ahead and take it now this is where they had the nice sidewalk to walk to school the school is it's in session now i think or maybe this is the week that they're out of school i'm not sure but i have a little bit of advantage on my beard is the fact that uh i have a dr strange beard right now uh, I had watched uh, Doctor Strange a bunch of years ago um, with Benedict, and I was like, uh, you know, I think I could grow a beard that looks like that, and so I did. Now his beard changed several times during the during the movie, so uh, I didn't try to get exact to any particular style. Just in general, trying to get a a beard like his. Whoops. All right, so everything's okay, I guess. So, so this is an expanded beard, going from uh, Doctor Strange to um, uh, not even Sean Connery, because uh, Sean Connery's beard was uh, not complete either. He he didn't have the year he won the award. It was a complete beard. Um, so, uh, so I'm trying to get the full complete beard look. Uh, one of the things I was hoping for was that the beard would be uh, uh, kind of cool looking. Uh, nice white, that would be nice to be white. I'm not sure what color it's gonna turn out to be at the time when I started. I got more of an idea now, but at the time I didn't have an idea. So I guess I was about 10 days into my growing my beard uh, when my mom died. Um, I was in Huntsville uh, in Alabama uh, when it happened, along with all my siblings. We were all there. And uh, when I mentioned last time she was in a hospital, she got out of the hospital, but she never fully recovered. And so uh, both my mom and died, dad died within uh, 30 days. So we were probably up to maybe day 13. I would say day, day 13 of my uh, beard growing. And uh, it was a day of the funeral for my mom. And uh, we're heading outside and my sister looks over at me and says, oh, uh, you, you forgot to shave this morning. Uh, we'll wait while you go do it now. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. This is intentional. I'm trying to grow a beard. And she looks at me and, and it's like, uh, uh, why? I said, I saw that in order to be in the top 10 of the sexiest men in the world, I needed a beard. So uh, I'm working on that. And she looked back at me 
smiling and says, I think you need more than a beard to make it to the top 10. And she laughed and walked off. <laughs> so here it was on a very uh, sobering day that we were able to have a little bit of laughter at my expense, <laughs> my poor old beard expense. It was doing a terrible job of being a beard. But I was glad I was able to bring up a little bit of of a smile, if you, even if it wasn't, uh, even if it was at my expense and for just a short time. Later that day, we were at the funeral and uh, some people were coming by to talk to me and I had uh, like two or three older women who were probably in their late 80s, early 90s, I would say, had come up to me to, uh, I think wiped something off my face. Like they thought I had a piece of dirt or something on my face and they wanted to uh, you know, clean it up for me because uh, I guess that's what they like doing. Like making sure us poor old guys <laughs> are not all filthy. And, uh, and when they started to do it, they realized that, uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, a filthy face. It was uh, just a guy trying to grow a beard and not doing a very good job at it. <laughs> and so, uh, they had placed my their hand on my, or at least one lady did. She placed her hand on my uh, face, and she said, "Ah, your mother used to talk about you a lot." And uh, and she left it at that, and then looked away and walked off. <laughs> and I was like, uh, "I wonder what that means. Talk about me a lot. Oh, I'm not gonna make it up here, am I?" Uh, So, so what, what we think she, she meant <laughs> is, is that, uh, or at least what I was thinking she meant was that she, she wasn't talking about my, uh, uh, she might have been talking about me, but she never mentioned the fact that I was growing a scruffy beard. <laughs> but they didn't say that, you know. Day 13 is really not a good look for a beard. Sometimes I wonder if it ever gonna be a good look for a beard, but I'm trying to stick in there, hopefully. All right. Get my bike going again. I made it up that hill before, but yeah. Guess I'm a little weaker than normal because I certainly couldn't do it then. I'm tired now. Anyway, it was probably around day 20, 19, 20. It was yesterday anyway. I just decided it would be a good time to uh, trim my beard. Now, did it need to be trimmed? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely did not need to be trimmed. But I've been growing this beard for a while. <laughs> so, I had to pretend at least that it was a beard. And so I went through the trimming process, even though I don't think it made any difference or anybody could even tell. But I thought it might encourage my beard to grow a little bit if it knew it was gonna be trimmed.
And so I looked at it the next day, which was yesterday, and uh, couldn't see much of a beard. You can kind of see it if you look at the right angles, but that's when I realized that it was not doing, it was not growing in looking the color I wanted it to. I wanted it to be a nice, beautiful white. Instead, it was growing in to be like a pepper. It had some white, but it had some gray, and it had some black. Uh, so a multicolor. Which wasn't what I was looking for. I wasn't looking for multicolor. But anyway, that's what I got. So at the end of the day, after another day of growing, I checked it, checked my beard out as I was getting ready to head to bed to see how much progress it had made. Yeah, it had not made that much progress. So I went to bed all disappointed, the fact that I was gonna have a nice, nice white beard. It wasn't gonna look cool. Instead, I was gonna get this ugly looking beard. But first I had to get a beard. Right now it was just an image of a potential beard. And uh, not, a, not anything like expected. So my original thoughts of being Santa Claus during December Pretty much gone now. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> no longer uh, have thoughts of uh, that happening. So with that in mind, I go to bed. And dream. Now most people don't like giving talking about their dreams because dreams gives you an insight into the personality or person of, of the person who's describing the th dream. In this case, I was like, <laughs> I was like the dream is, um, uh, I know why I dreamed what I dreamed. <laughs> and based on this background, you probably can tell the re reason why I dreamed part of it too. And, and although it was like, uh, observed and horrifying and uh, <laughs> can't be interpreted several different ways <laughs> I still thought it'd be it was funny in the end I thought it was a interesting funny dream that you would not want to actually ever happen but it's funny just because it's not what you would expect to happen. <laughs> it's the exact opposite. Totally crazy thing. So let's get into this dream. It starts off very, very calmly, which me working in the accounting department, uh, heading up the accounting people, which was uh, about eight to 10 people. And we were right on the brink of having a party. We were having a Christmas party, but not for the office staff. We decided this year what we would do was, is take up a collection, get a bunch of gifts. A lot of the county people participated, get it up. We decided to go for 20 gifts. And, uh, and so we invited 20, uh, people from the orphanage to come by and uh, have Christmas with us. So we were all excited about it. We, uh, we set up the decorations. They were in the office. We had a big area opened up so the kids uh, could have a good time. So, and plenty of area to play in, uh, put up things that could be broken. These kids were in the ages between four and um, maybe 12. So uh, what we had was going to be, we we're going to try to make them have a really good day. Uh, and so that's what we planned on doing. However, as things 
always happens uh, in real life and in dreams uh, things don't go as planned and this was no exception to the uh, things don't go as planned scenario first thing that happened was the person that was we hired to be Santa Claus for the kids uh, couldn't make it and with the late hour and the kids already arriving, we didn't really have time to get a substitute Santa. So everybody said, since um, I had been growing my beard, it was coming in absolutely fabulously white. So I could fit the profile of a substitute fill-in Santa. And so I ended up agreeing that I would go ahead and play the role of a Santa helper. Now, I can't be Santa Claus because I didn't have a red suit. I wasn't jolly, although I did have a belly like a bowl full of jelly, but most of the stuff I didn't mean. So I went out to, uh, mingled with the kids, said hello to them, had my little uh, white beard looking all cool, kids wanting to play with it. So I was having a good time. But eventually, it was time to uh, hand out the presents. Picking up speed. Now, it turns out that I'm not one of those Santas who has kids sit in their lap and he tells them things or they, they make requests for things they want for Christmas and he tries to fulfill their wishes. Uh, I wasn't even a Santa, I didn't have this. I wasn't even the real Santa, I didn't have a suit. So, uh, so my style of being a Santa is um, telling everybody that go grab your own presents. Now when I tell you to go grab your presents, you must grab only one. Did y'all hear that kids? Grab only one, one present a piece. 20 presents, 20 kids, this is gonna work out great. So the kids all excited and they take off dashing to go grab a present. Went pretty well actually. Some of their bigger kids made sure they got the bigger presents because I guess they thought mm, bigger, better, but uh, that wasn't necessarily true. And, uh, but everybody was happy. Everybody was having fun. There was a lot of laughing, giggling. Uh, eventually the teachers, the adults in the room, uh, gathered them all together into the center of the uh, open area that we had as they were opening their presents. So I was watching them and they were, they were really having a good time. So I was thinking this is really successful despite the fact that we don't have the real Santa here. While thinking that I was looking around and I noticed that three presents were unclaimed. Well, that kind of irked me a little bit. I mean, we bought 20 presents. We have 20 kids. Why do I have three extra presents. I shouldn't have three extra presents. All presents should be taken. Well, the more I thought about it, the uh, angrier I got about it. I was thinking, it's not right. Three kids who were supposed to be having presents does not have presents. Do they not want to be happy? What's wrong with these kids? Do they not want to share joy with all the rest of the kids? Why didn't they get their presents? What's wrong with these kids? Well, in my dream world, I, I was not a happy camper.
eventually it got to me. And I had to shout out to all the kids saying, who didn't get their presents? Yeah, it was an angry shout, which you know, I don't really feel like doing on my bike, riding around. Uh, and all the kids stopped what they were doing. The laughter stopped, the playing around stopped, and everybody looked up at me. But nobody volunteered to be the one that didn't pick up their presents. So I said, so, you're not gonna tell me who didn't get their presents. Okay then, everybody hold their presents up in the air and I'm gonna find out who didn't, who did not pick one. And about that time, a little boy, probably six years old, comes walking forward, trembling, saying that he, he didn't pick up his present. And I looked at him and shouted, well, go then, go do it, do it now, pick your present. And he hurried off to grab his present. And I turned back to the crowd of kids some of them creeping closer to the adults in the room for comfort and said, who else? Who else didn't pick up their presents? Nobody came forward. And I shouted, this is Santa. I know where you live. If you don't come get your presents, there's going to be consequences. A couple of kids started crying. Uh, and then I woke up. So I don't know how it ended. But it made me laugh because I was like, <laughs> what type of person creates a opportunity for kids to have a fun time <laughs> and then change it into a horror flick <laughs> where nobody was having a good time. Uh, I was like, I was just too absurd. There's no way that something like that could happen. And so it made me just crack up because I have a dream in which it happens in, in my dream. I was told by somebody that says, well, people grieve differently. <laughs> and I'm thinking, nah, I don't know if that has anything to do with grieving. Uh, apparently, um, I still want to be, uh, have my little white beard and, uh, and be Santa. But, you know, just in case, uh, I don't think I'll be putting out any, uh, I'm available to be Santa Claus this Christmas. I really like the way that everything looks when this time of the year. Now we're past the spring. Oh, we're still in spring, obviously, but uh, we're past the very beginning of spring. Uh, but many of the trees still have the uh, brightness to their green. They haven't turned their dark green yet. It looks like it's getting more and more cloudy, doesn't it? Kind of wonder what's up with this tree. It looks like it's thinking it's fall. to make sure I get my brakes going on down this way, otherwise you get in trouble. Oh, speaking in trouble, one of the things that I have done, which some people had asked me about, was how my do-it-yourself project gonna be going? When I'm gonna air, when that's gonna happen? Well, I ended up canceling it. Um, 
because I had too many things going on, there wasn't uh, a time period I could handle it. Maybe I'll pick it up again in like June or something, but for right now it's tabled. And I'll talk with the people and find out what they think. Maybe I could change it to when would be a good time. But yeah, it won't, won't be uh, any time in the next 10, 15 days, that's for sure. And something that was also discouraging to me uh, was that I had what they called the simplest installation a person could ever do. Now I realize that's advertisement. That's just somebody's advertising saying that this is the simplest in installation ever. But this is the Blink security system. I said, you know, I need to install a security system here. I have an alarm system already, but I don't have any cameras. So I said, well, let me get some cameras installed. And, uh, and since I will probably just electrocute myself if I try to do um, a wiring, uh, I need to go with wireless. That way, um, I can't electrocute myself, or less of a chance anyway. So I ordered a Blink security system, which comes with uh, three cameras. And uh, so I already picked out where I was gonna put the three cameras. And it, it turned out, so I set one up as a, as a uh, test before I went to all the trouble of putting up the other ones. And the test failed. Uh, it said what it needed was three bars of wireless. And I had three bars. And uh, it said it needed to have a good connection to the internet and a good connection to what, what I think they called sensor. And it had a three bars on both. And three was the maximum you could get. One, two, or three. It said it you, it's not gonna work with a one. And it says you need to have a two or a three. Well, I had a three, but it still didn't work very well. I mean, it kind of worked, but not very well. So I said, okay, well, since I got something that's supposed to be very easy and yet it doesn't work, what's the problem? So now I have to go into uh, diagnose mode and I'm diagnosing something I don't know anything about. So I decided uh, for no particular reason, I guess, it just seemed like maybe it's the reason is that even though it was telling me three bars of wireless connection, that it was lying. That it really had some other bars, and therefore that's the reason it wasn't working. Now I came to this conclusion after I tried the other two cameras, because I was thinking it could be just that I have one bad camera. But the other cameras did the exact same thing. When I had the camera right next to the sensor and the wireless connection to the internet. It worked flawlessly. And when I put it like uh, 20 feet away, it quit working. So I was like, okay, what I need is maybe something that could boost the signal strength. And that'll do it. So I ordered a wireless extender that would boost my signal and therefore maybe work with the cameras. Well, I bought it, hung it up in the center of the house and uh, yeah, nothing happened. It didn't went any better, went any worse. Maybe I didn't connect it correctly. So then I tried to figure out if I connected it correctly or not, but it seemed like every test I did, it looked like it was working correctly. So I decided, okay, that's not helping. So I took it down from the center of the house and moved it closer to the camera. In fact, to where it was within uh, like three feet of the camera. <laughs> but the camera was on the other side of the glass to the outside. The camera was outside and on the other side of the glass was the uh, uh, wireless extender. And amazingly that worked. I said, okay, well maybe it just needs a direct uh, C to the camera. So I placed it in the position where it could see the camera and put the camera back at the location I wanted it to. And that worked. I said, yay. So that's all I need to do. I just need to do that two more times for two other cameras. So I got all excited and decided it's time to go out and put up one of the cameras. Now one of the cameras I wanted to put up was gonna be in a tree. 
because I wanted it to be high enough where somebody couldn't just grab it or knock it down with a broom. I wanted it to be high enough to be out of people's reach. Uh, so I decided that would need to be on a tree. Could have been other things, I guess, but I decided a tree, which means I needed to mount the uh, camera on the tree. So I went and got my ladder, uh, which extends pretty high in order to get up to a two-story building, so it can, it's pretty good extension. And I set it up against the tree. Now I still weigh about 250 pounds when I was doing this. I weigh, I weigh about 245 now, but at that time I was still around 250. And I start climbing uh, the ladder to get up to the spot where I was planning on putting the camera. Well, as I put the 250 pounds of weight on the ladder, it started sinking into the ground. And I was, when it first sinked, I said, eh, that'll be okay. So I took a couple more steps up and all of a sudden one side, the right side started sinking faster than the left side. And then uh, the ladder went down, I went down, the uh, ladder hit the ground, I hit the ground. I was laying on the ground thinking, well, that didn't go as planned. And one of my neighbors was driving by, stopped the car, rolled down the window, yelled out if I was okay. I told him I was perfectly fine. I was just resting. Well, There's no point admitting that I fell off the ladder. <laughs> That's just embarrassing. Don't need the neighbors to know this. So, so after laying there a couple more minutes saying to myself, I wonder how I'm going to actually do this without falling the second time. So I try to put the ladder in different areas and try to like pump it a couple of times to get it deeper into the ground. And I uh, finally thought that I had it to where it was down well enough and started climbing the ladder. Well, it turns out that the, the ladder rungs, the uh, cross things on the ladder, uh, really hurt your feet if, because they're only about two inches across on this ladder, it's a metal ladder. Uh, and uh, uh, putting 250 pounds on one foot when you're trying to lift your foot up to, to get to the next rung of the ladder really hurts. <laughs> so it was like torture climbing up those uh, eight or nine steps that I needed to do in order to get to the uh, high enough in order to mount the, the uh, camera. But eventually I did and I got the camera mounted. Went back inside. It did not work. I, the extender was where it could see it. It was up there where I could, but yet it didn't work. It wasn't that far away. I mean, it was probably 50 feet away from the extender. Still got three bars, did not work. I had to climb the ladder again, take it down, got closer, it worked. Moved further away, didn't work. So I then spent the next 30 minutes or so moving the extender around to different locations until I finally found a spot where it worked with both of them. <laughs> kind of. It worked with one really well. It worked with the other one haphazardly. Uh, so yeah, even, even doing something that is the simplest thing in the world according to the advertisement uh, was an all day event and it still didn't work in the end. <laughs> it only partially worked. I mean, it does work, kind of. And one of the things I wanted was to do 30 seconds of filming, and one of them will do that, but the other one, just a random amount of filming. It just does whatever it feels like it. Sometimes it's three seconds, sometimes it's 10 seconds, sometimes 30 seconds, sometimes eight seconds. It just randomly picks a number. I don't even know what criteria it's picking. Uh, but anyway, it's up, doing something. So I consider it mostly a failure, but some success. <laughs> so something even as simple as that I can't do. It's very depressing. All right, we'll conclude this as our first big, big ride of, this, of uh, April. And uh, I'll see everybody next time I try to head out into the world, which I hope to do soon, but we'll see. <laughs>